Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Professor Crimsy, and in today's tutorial we will create a spooky animated screen for Twitch using keyframe animation and a 2D camera in Clip Studio Paint. So without further ado, let's begin the ritual. The first thing we need to do is create the canvas for our project. So simply head to File, New, and when the project window opens, make sure that your canvas size follow the same image ratio as the one you stream with. Most people stream in 1080p, but I'll be going with a 4K canvas just to make sure I get better image quality, which is 3840 by 2160 Also, don't forget to make sure your DPI is at 300 as well, and then press OK. Once your blank canvas is created, it's now time to fill it with spookalicious art. First off, remember that for this tutorial, we'll be animating this scene using keyframe animation only, not frame by frame animation, so we can put as much details in the art as we want to, really. Keyframe animation, otherwise known as tween animation, is when you create motion out of static images using the interpolation between the keyframes on a timeline. I guess you could say keyframe animation is similar to moving a string puppet. All the different parts of your puppet are static objects that move independently from each other and visually stay the same. So when looking for ideas, try to think about what would look good using simple motions, such as translations, rotations, and scaling. Try to have enough objects moving in your scene to make it look dynamic, but avoid going overboard with it, or your canvas might end up like a chaotic mess. There's a few tips I can give you during this process, such as when in doubt, make sure that your movement would look good, which you can simulate by using Ctrl T, moving the pivot point of your piece to its origin, and then rotate it around to see how it will look like. A second tip would be to make the moving pieces as complete and filled in as you can, because moving the pieces around can definitely uncover holes in your art, which is pretty easy to avoid if you picture them as standalone assets, like this. Basically, just make sure to render the whole piece, even if part of it might be hidden behind something else. Lastly, a good tip is to add a border around objects you want to stand out a bit. You can add a border to individual layers, but you can also add a border to a whole folder if you like. In this scenario, I added a white border to the floating head folder to make it pop, and a black border around the table and the roses to thicken them up a bit. Oh, and one last thing we must consider when searching for ideas is that our timeline is limited to 24 frames. That is, if you're a Clip Studio Paint Pro user. If you bought the X version, then you will not have any frame limitation. So once you've rendered all your layers and your scene is starting to look pretty cool, what's left to do is convert all the layers and folders of our different parts into file objects so we can start animating our scene. To do this, simply right-click on the folder or layer, go to File Object, then click on Convert Layer to File Object. There are many benefits to converting layers and folders into file objects. First, it removes clutter from the project and allows you to animate a single object using a single pivot point. Secondly, file objects retain all previous layer contents while allowing you to modify the original file as much as you wish. But the best thing about this is doing so will not alter the animation keyframes that already exist, so even after you begin animating, you can still make changes to the art. Thirdly, and most important of all, once you enable keyframes on a regular layer, you will notice that said layer becomes locked, which makes you unable to perform common transformation actions like rotation and scaling. But if you convert it first into a file object, you can then go to the object menu and use all the transformation features available. Of course, make sure to keep each and every part you want to animate as a separate file object. For instance, I made a file object for each strand of air, otherwise I could not animate them all separately. Now begins the truly fun part, bringing life into your scene. First things first, we'll have to create a new timeline for our animation by heading to the animation menu, timeline, and clicking new timeline. When the timeline windows open, simply make sure your playback is set to 24 frames, unless you have the X version of Clip Studio Paint, in which case feel free to make your animation last longer. Then change the frame rate to 8 and this will give us a full 3 seconds of animation to play with. Press OK and then head back to the top menu, window, and click on Timeline. Now, as you can see, we have our full timeline here. Feel free to zoom in or out of it using these magnifier glass icons, and make sure to activate the loop icon to have your animation repeat itself once it reaches the end of the timeline. Now, let's start animating. The first thing to consider when creating your keyframes is the type of interpolation you have enabled between those frames. There are three types of interpolation you can choose from, hold, linear, and smooth. You can quickly change how your keyframes interpolate by right-clicking on the frame and switch to your desired method. Note that this is also where you can copy, cut, and delete frames if needed. 
Here's a quick graphic explaining how each type of interpolation behaves, but as a general basis, you will most likely want to use the smooth interpolation because this option creates the most organic looking motion. So first, I decided to create the up and down movement for the head, so I selected all the layers from the character folder and click on Enable keyframes for this layer. Then go to the first frame, move the head, and press the short key K on the keyboard to move the layers as a group and click on Add keyframe. And then to make your animation loop perfectly, duplicate them. After that, all I did was add middle frames to the animation and made sure to move their pivot point to ensure that the rotation would originate from the right position. As a little tip, please note that the copy-pasted frames will keep the same pivot points, but the newly created frames will have their own pivot at the center of the object. So if you want to make sure all your frames have the same pivot, it is better to copy-paste them than to create new ones and just move the pivot manually. And that's it! Now, all that's left to do is repeat this process over and over for all the hair and move on to the next assets. While we speed run this process, it is good to note that you can move each file object separately with the Object Transform tool, but you can't use this tool to move multiple objects at once. You can, however, enable keyframes on a folder containing multiple file objects that are themselves animated and move, rotate, or scale them all around as one entity. You could even create a complex folder hierarchy for puppet animation using this method, but I digress. Remember to review your animation as often as possible during this process and feel free to hide some folders if your animation preview becomes a bit laggy. I did follow pretty much the same steps for the entire scene, but it is worthy to specify that I also animated the opacity of certain layers to create the glow effect on the writing and the candles, as well as the smoke coming out of the top candle. To animate the opacity, all you must do is press on the little plus icon of your file object, enable keyframes on it, and create your animation. Finally, I animated the eye in the crystal ball using the old interpolation and at this point, I think we can call it good and done. Now, despite everything looking pretty finished, there is still one last thing we should add to the scene to create even more depth in the movement, and that is a subtle camera movement zooming in and out. In order to create camera movement in your scene, only head over to the top menu, animation, new animation layer, and select 2D camera folder. Next, simply select all the folders and layers in your scene and drag and drop them into the camera folder. Animating the camera is also pretty simple. I created a keyframe from the start and end like we always do, and for the middle frame, I simply scaled it down inside the canvas just a bit. Just enough so the whole environment appears a bit in motion. Lastly, to show your camera's point of view in the canvas, select your camera folder and in the tools property, select the icon Show Camera's Field of View. Finally, now's the time to render your animation and see the fruit of all your hard work before your very eyes. To render your animation, go to File, Export Animation and select your desired output format. I personally went with the Movie option, then chose MP4 as my file extension, gave it a name and then pressed Save. Once you do this, one last window will appear and let you choose your desired size and frame rate. Don't forget to check the Apply 2D Camera FX box if you want your camera movement in the final render and press OK. Now everything crashes. Alright, I'm just joking. Now all we have to do is wait. That's it. Let's take a look at our final render. Pretty cool, right? Now get your Streamlabs open and in your starting soon window, press the little plus icon, go to Media Source, Toggle, add new source, give it a name, browse your computer files to find your brand new video, select it, and press open. Ooh. Now just don't forget to activate the loop function and voila, you're all done. Now, I really hope I covered everything you guys needed in today's tutorial, but if there's anything else you'd like to know, if you have any questions, or if you like this video and are feeling appreciative, then feel free to comment below, show the channel some love by liking the video, maybe subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one, and let your spirit drift away towards these other recommended videos if you feel so inclined. But that will be it for me, time to cozy up in my crypt, until next time everybody, au revoir!